Zero carb carnivore day of eating, and it's really gonna be a meal because I'll probably only eat once today. But I'm gonna show you guys everything I do from the prep to the foods I eat to why I eat it. So without further ado. So this is the, oh man, forgive my anatomy. I can't even, I believe this is the leg from a lamb I slaughtered about two, a week and a half ago now that's just been drying in my fridge. It was a relatively lean lamb, so I've been looking for a source of fat. And I actually went to my local supermarket today. The guy happened to be trimming some Australian lamb chops, so I got plenty of extra fat for my meal here that I'm gonna throw on the grill with it. But we got plenty of fat for like a, less, than a, less than $2 a pound, which is an amazing price. So I'm very happy about that. All fresh, never frozen. That's a theme I'm going with now. Here we have some lamb liver that I might try. Might being because I actually, you know, I was gonna do an Eskimo diet and I ordered some cod liver oil uh, that was very expensive. So maybe I'll just use this instead of the lamb liver for now. Or maybe I'll just use the lamb liver first because this will go bad, but we'll try this today anyway. These were, these were very expensive. These were $50 each. It's wild, raw cod liver oil. I believe all they add is a little bit of rosemary and vitamin E just to preserve it slightly. So I'm gonna try this today and over the next, I'll try this over the next few weeks. Just, you know, I wanted to get some more EPA, DHA, and uh, just some, some extra vitamins. I, you know, I, I would stick with the liver, but I was just trying to get a higher omega-3 content, and I didn't. I thought I was going to do the Eskimo diet, so I wouldn't have ordered this in hindsight. You know, I spent about $100 on two bottles of it, and it's definitely not something that, well, size one teaspoon servings per bottle, 30. So if you had one teaspoon a day, $50 a month is not too crazy, but definitely on the more expensive side compared to liver. So we're going to bring this out onto the grill. All right, so I have just a regular gas grill, but I always put wood or charcoal in it to get some more flavor. And I like, the, I like the gas grill because the flame builds a lot quicker. I don't have to wait all day for it to, uh, to heat up. I put the fat on first because fat is pretty much fuel for the fire. So, you know, it'll, it'll just sear on the outside really quickly, lubricate the grates. And all I'm really doing is warming this up. I'm not really trying to cook it at all. Should have definitely waited for this fire to get hotter. But, you know, I'm going to give this fire like... Uh, we give this fire like five minutes, guys. It'll be nice and hot. We'll do this way quicker. Hey, I was putting the fat away, and my butcher gave me a little small, tiny lamb chop to, uh, I guess I could gnaw on it while I'm waiting for this fire to heat up. You know, the funny thing about vegans is, uh, like, Eat it raw with your hands, and ironically, a lot of carnivores do. All right, I think our grates are just about hot enough now. See, we got some nice color even after 20 seconds. That's all I really go for, guys. Just a little bit of color on each side. It's still raw in the middle. I find the raw fat digests a lot easier. I've been eating, I've been eating the small pieces of fat right off the grill, but save most of it for the meal. What I have here is some beef tallow. And I keep it out here, it's not perishable, the bugs aren't really attracted to it, but what I do with this beef tallow is when I have a lean piece of meat or a very dry piece of meat like this, I spread it on the outside so I get a nice, even crust and I can get some more heat retention. I find that a lot of times the leaner meats don't really uh, flare up too well. Let me all, uh, Let's go inside for a minute while this chills out here on the grill. So I like to eat the organ meats first uh, and then the fat. So that's just kind of an order of indigenous preference and to able to gauge what my cravings and appetites are like. So we're going to have a little bit of uh, raw liver first. This is about two, two week old liver, but since it's from a freshly killed animal, it's still this is still like the freshest liver I've ever had and it's two weeks old. It's very good. It's like, how to describe the flavor. Very pleasant. No bitterness. Very mild mineral flavor. Not really sweet at all.
You know, it's pretty good. I'm definitely not craving it, so I'll only have a bite. This cod liver oil smells like cod liver oil, unfortunately. We'll do a teaspoon of this, especially considering I've never had it before. It doesn't taste good, that's for sure. But it doesn't, doesn't taste bad either. Have another teaspoon. I kind of like that, even though it doesn't taste good. It's almost like I'm craving it. Not bad. Okay. So, what we achieved through that, those two teaspoons of cod liver oil and that one bite of liver is an insane amount of vitamin A. And vitamin A and my high intake of vitamin A is what I attribute to like my overall health, my skin health. It's just such an important vitamin that people really don't get enough of in, especially on a standard American diet. Um, and it also, you know, it helps with satiation. It helps, uh, not to mention, you know, there's plenty of omega-3s in this. Liver is a nutritionally complete food in general. It has every fat-soluble vitamin as well as all the water-soluble vitamins. I can't say enough about the nutrient density of these foods. And if you want to see me go into detail on these foods, I have a recent video where I tasted all the organs of a sheep or lamb and went over the nutrient profile. And then I have another video talking about all the vitamins in meat. It's titled like, Meat Has All the Vitamins You Need. A little char going on the outside of our lamb shoulder. And I, I never eat outside like this, guys. I usually just finish cooking everything, but today is a bit unusual of a day, so need a little bit of the fat outside. I got some salt here. You know, I don't have to salt it. It tastes good without salt, but I enjoy it a bit more with salt on it, so. This is just a regular a French Celtic salt. I like the taste. I got, I'm gonna mess around and taste a few more salts and then maybe I'll do a video on it. But just put a little bit of salt on the fat. And see, this is like, this is completely raw pretty much. You know, I've been eating relatively lean lamb and lean meats over the past, like, few weeks. And, you know, this is the first time I've had a decent fat meal. I've definitely been craving it. I mean... Normally I only have to cook the steaks for like a minute or two on each side, but like the shape of this lamb leg is really irregular. It's thick. I don't know if I'm going to do this again, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just buy like steaks and chops from now on. I had maybe, I haven't eaten in two days. I had two bites of liver, two teaspoons of cod liver oil, and about half a pound of lamb fat. And I'm full. I don't really want to eat anymore. Go inside and sit down. Doesn't matter if it's like eight in the morning or you know four p.m. There's always someone doing landscaping in this neighborhood. Uh, so I actually just went to throw some chicken on the grill because I grill a lot every day. So I always cook for my family too. You know why not throw? And then the, the wood's burning off anyway, so I might as well throw some. Uh, on the, but I'm actually not that hungry because I had this is like maybe half a pound of lamb fat. That's what I ate when I was standing out there. I had a few bites of liver and the cod liver oil. I'm really not hungry. Uh, maybe I'll take a couple more bites of fat and the lean and see how I feel. Let's take another bite of fat. And again guys, the temp on this is like blue rare. Yeah, this haunch is uh, also blue rare. Let's just taste it, and maybe I'll eat the rest of this later. Doesn't matter if it's like a super lean animal. You put anything over wood fire, it's going to taste good. You know, it's a little chewy, gamey, still good. I'm still, I feel like I'm thirsty, so maybe I'll try some blood with this meal. Although it's cold and I don't really want to drink cold blood. Uh, this is about a week and a half old now, so it's not as vibrantly red as it used to be. Uh, I might as well try some, right?
Tastes the same. Like, when I taste this, I don't necessarily like how it tastes, but my body is almost like telling me to drink more of it. So a couple sips of that. Uh, I'm going to hang out for a bit, maybe I'll go to the gym, run, and uh, I'll come back to this later. I could, guys, I could probably, honestly, I could probably finish all of this, but I'm not, like, I'm not full, but I'm not hungry, so I'll just, uh, I'll go with my natural appetite. Okay, went to the gym, had a little bit of a run. In hindsight, you know, like not eating for two days, and then having a big meal, and then running a mile in the gym, not the most pleasant experience, but we toughed it out. So, uh, I'm gonna try to eat the rest of this and see how far I get. I don't really feel like bringing up any organ meats or having any more organs today, so we'll just stick with this. One interesting difference between lamb and beef, or well, goats and sheep is, not goats and sheep, but uh, one interesting difference between like goats, sheep, and cows is these animals store the carotenoids in the grass as retinoic acid in the fat instead of carotenoids. So the color is always white regardless of whether they're pasture or not. That fat is good, man. And I don't understand how people eat so much protein on this diet. I really don't. Now to me this is a little interesting because I got a little egg of a lamb that was raised in Pennsylvania and slaughtered in front of me in the Bronx. And then I got a piece of lamb fat that's from Australia that was shipped over 45 days later. Not to mention that cod liver oil earlier was from uh, Norway, I believe. So in regards to the goal of this part of the meal, you know, we talked about the vitamin goals earlier. This is to get omega-3s and calories in pretty much. That's really it. Omega-3s, there's fat-soluble vitamins and plenty of fat-soluble vitamins for anyone who miss amount of high-quality meat, but I already got my vitamins in, so this is mainly for calories. And I guess just to go over cost for everything in this meal, I mean... Most of the lamb parts were, uh, four, it was $4 a pound live weight for the lamb. That's roughly $8 a pound for meat. The lamb fat I bought from the supermarket was like $1.50 a pound, very cheap, great price. That collar oil was stupidly expensive. That one teaspoon of collar oil was literally like $1.50 worth of collar oil. But, yeah, it was worth trying. And I don't think $50 a month is too crazy of an expense uh, for all your nutrients. You know, cod oil is nice because you get, you know, your vitamin A, your vitamin D, your omega-3s, all vitamins that are fairly difficult to get. Vitamin K2, especially the, the, high, the high DHA content and the, the omega-3s. Usually what I would do is I'd scoop the marrow out, but this animal was like, really lean and not fatty at all. And what happens when the animal is really lean, the marrow turns red. It's not really, there's not much fat in the marrow. So this animal was not in good condition when it was slaughtered to say the least. It's a very lean, low fat animal. Definitely was off a quality pasture for at least a couple weeks. So I haven't really updated you guys on the, the insomnia and histamine thing. And I ended up figuring out it was candida. Uh, I, believe it or not, it was Candida. And I'll do a whole update video on that, but... You know, I think I've got everything under control so far. And... Uh, you know, it's interesting. The, the whole story lines up and it makes sense to how I got it. Uh, I'm going to try to put it on paper and definitely do, like, a 10-minute explanation about, like, all my experiences over the past few months and why it happened to me. But, ironically, Candida caused the histamine intolerance... And that also caused the magnesium and potassium deficiency, so pretty long story. So in regards to like my sourcing and what's going on lately, if I can get this lamb fat from the butcher every day at the supermarket, that'd probably be my best source of fat. If not, uh, maybe we'll just try the prime ribeyes. Uh, so I have two options. I can go out to Pennsylvania, buy another whole lamb. The problem is, it's a three hour drive each way and I don't want to make that drive, and I'm worried my car might get stuck out there, so that's probably out. And I just got a, 
I'm probably going to be buying from a meat purveyor and in the city, so I'll have access to meat, but it'll mostly be like grain-fed prime stuff. It won't be like grass-fed, so I'll have to make a decision there. Uh, I'm definitely going to be missing stuff like, I'm not going to necessarily have like lamb testicles or stuff to eat, but honestly guys, like a lot of you guys are saying it's important to eat certain parts of the animal to the, and they do certain things, but I don't believe one bit of that. Um, so what are you going to do? Not too worried about it. You know, in the past I've always eaten with a knife and a fork. But what I've noticed is with these cuts that I brought on the whole lamb, I've been eating like the Inuit Alaskans do where they use a knife in their hands. And a lot of times they would bite the meat and cut it in front of their mouth. Surprisingly, I think I only cut my finger once doing this. You know, the whole problem is, unless I'm paying for literally super high quality lamb, I'm not getting what I'm paying for. Like, I'm not getting a higher omega-3 content because the lamb isn't fatty and it's not a high quality pasture. I might as well buy the grain-fed prime beef. In the case of, uh, in the case of that lamb out in Pennsylvania, I don't know. I could, could be good, could be bad. I think in this case, it's a good idea because it's fall and the lamb's going to be as fat as possible. It's, it's literally the best time of year to buy a lamb, so I think for the next month or two, it might not be a bad idea for me to, uh, to buy a lamb every month, but from then on in the winter and early next year, I think I'm better off sticking to the meat purveyor. And just in regards to food prep, in regards to storage, just everything in general, it's a lot less work for the dry aged meat. And I, I can age some ribeyes and I enjoy that more. And it's not more expensive with the prices I get. So, you know, if I could choose between eat, and I could eat, I could be eating grass fed ribeye instead of this for the same price. So I don't know why the hell I'm doing this, to be honest. But what are you going to do? You know, I thought eating nose to tail would be beneficial, but unfortunately, unless you raise your own animals and control the quality, the only benefits you're getting of eating nose to tail are the freshness, as well as you get all the parts, like the te like testicles might be hard to get otherwise. At least fresh. I could order a case of frozen testicles tomorrow if I wanted them. What do you guys think if I eat like only lamb testicles for a month? How crazy would that be? I'm tempted to try it. Alright guys, so we ate maybe a pound of fat, a pound and a half of meat, a few bites of liver, a teaspoon of olive oil, well two teaspoons of olive oil. Overall, a very nutrient dense and a very low inflammatory meal. Granted, you know, we didn't eat it raw, but I, you know, I mean, technically speaking, you know, is this not raw on the inside? So, for any of you guys who want to get, want to criticize me saying I'm searing it on the outside and salting it, by all means. But for the most part, 95% of this meal is raw. Some the Maasai diet didn't work out with the candida thing. Uh, the Eskimo diet didn't work out because I tasted boiled fish one day. It was good, you know, it wasn't bad. But I started burping up fish, and I was just like, I never want fish again. So. Those two were out, and then I was like, all right, what can I do? Maybe we could try Sean Baker's diet for like a month, just grain-fed ribeyes and see if I feel different. So I'm thinking that's the best bet, and that's honestly probably the one diet I should do for that specific reason. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, just share the channel. Um, let me know how you like this structure, because honestly, like, if I wanted to do a day in the life with you guys, it would be boring, because I'd wake up, I'd drive to work, then I drive home and go to sleep. If I wanted to do a day of eating, like, what do I show? Because I usually only eat once a day. So maybe I'll try to like cheese it up one of these days for you guys. Um, but this is just to give you guys a general idea of what I do and what I've been doing. Um, maybe or maybe not the grain fed ribeye thing will pan out. I'm just trying to really lean out and and lower my just just lower my body weight in general. And I think that would be counterintuitive to the goal. 
But uh, we'll see what happens. I'm eating like a pound of fat a day and I'm going to get my cholesterol test and my LDL is going to be through the roof.